College News, brought to you by the Murray State News. Hello and welcome to the College News. I'm Joey Reynolds. On Monday, March 1st, vaccine registration opened up for the 1C group, which includes Murray State faculty and staff. Anybody over the age of 60 or in Phase 1B or 1C can now register to get vaccinated at the CFSB Center. To register, visit the Callaway County Health Department website. Every week, the Murray State Racer Restart page updates the positive COVID-19 cases. There have been 15 cases this week, all of which have been students. MSU has had 542 cases since August. Murray, Kentucky was hit by a large storm Sunday that dropped almost six inches of rain, causing widespread flooding and property damage. Power outages were reported throughout the city, and cell service for Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile saw problems as well. Judge Executive Kenny Imes declared a state of local emergency for Callaway County, allowing the county to seek state and federal emergency funds. Flooding on the 16th Street caused damage at the keg and multiple cars and apartments at Station 74 have flood damage. Some motorists found themselves stuck in the floodwaters. Unfortunately, I was one of them. Passing the CFSB Center, a flash flood had started filling the road, causing the engine of my car to flood and shut off. Thankfully, the waters receded and I was able to get my car towed off for repairs. Football is back. The Racers opened up their season by hosting the Skyhawks of UT Martin on Sunday, February 28th. The Racers were about to take a 7-3 lead in the fourth quarter on the backs of their defense, but then a two-hour lightning delay brought the game to a halt. But Murray State came out of the delay, holding on to the momentum, and came away with a 14-10 win to kick off the Dean Hood era. The Racers will return to action on the road when they take on SEMO at 2 p.m. on Sunday, March 7th. Saturday was the last day of the regular season for Racer basketball as they headed on the road to face the Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles. The women's game turned into an absolute thriller. A really back and forth first half would end up with the Racers down by only one point. In the third, Tennessee Tech would go on a big run putting them up by seven. The Racers would quickly fight back with a run of their own. They would end up tied with only two seconds left in the game. It would come down to two free throws by Mana Mensa. Misses the first, drains the second, putting the Racers up by one. Tech would try to respond, but they couldn't get it done. The Racers win 68-67. to They'll have the sixth seed in the OBC tournament. The men's team would not fare as well, losing the lead two minutes into the game, and they would never get it back. The Racers would get close to the Golden Eagles, tying the game at one point, but the shooting and turnover problems have been following them all season, and the absence of Damon Robinson would prove too much. Some Racers still had big games, Chico Carter Jr. scoring a career high of 27 points. But in the end, the Golden Eagles would hand the Racers their second straight loss, winning 71-61. Here's what the OVC tournament will look like for the women. This Thursday, the number 6 Racer women's team will face the number 3 Southeastern Missouri State Red Hawks at 3.30. And the men, earning the number 5 seed, will face number 4 Jacksonville State later that night at 7.00. Both of these games can be seen on ESPN+. Monday kicked off the month of March, and that means Dairy Queen is finally back open. It looked a little different than most opening days. There were no lines as patrons stayed in their cars. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Dairy Queen has closed its walk-up counter and moved to car hopping. Cars were already in the parking lot when the restaurant reopened. Staff moved from the counter to the cars, which kept coming and going. The 72-year-old franchise is one of the few Dairy Queens still with a walk-up counter in only outdoor season. That's all for this week's edition of the College News. Be sure to pick up a copy of tomorrow's Murray State News, and we'll see you back here next week.